Welcome back. Sign of U.S. trade talks come at a time when the two sides are increasingly hostile towards each other. U.S. politicians are now much more hawkish when they speak of China. Now, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, for instance, has been a leading figure in this regard. He attacked Beijing for its COVID-19 management, its handling of Hong Kong, human rights issue in Xinjiang, etc. So why is such a leading political figure so obsessed with China? What role do hawkish U.S. politicians like him play in shaping Sino-U.S. relations? And is China responding properly? Joining us again is Professor Zhang Gong from the University of International Business and Economics and also from Tennessee. U.S. is Professor Joseph Mahoney at the East China Normal University. And also later, possibly from Zhejiang via Skype, is Professor Wang Yiwei at the Renmin University of China. Welcome to you all. So let's talk about this. Let me first start with uh, Professor Mahoney there. During his visit to the Czech Republic on Wednesday, Secretary Mike Pompeo said that China's economic power is in some ways a greater global threat than the Soviet Union um, during the Cold War. Do you think that this uh, kind of assessment, this opinion, has any logical basis? In what ways? Well, I think that the, the, the tendency of Mike Pompeo to try to equate China with the Soviet Union, to equate the Chinese ruling party with the Soviet Union's uh, ruling party, to try to drag the current moment back into you know this a historical sense this previous cold war mentality is is part of his logic but uh, uh the fact of the matter is um uh china china's economy is much more uh powerful on the global stage than uh, than the than the soviet economy was because at that time uh, the soviet union was not as integrated with the world economy as China is today. So in this sense, the Chinese economy is much more powerful. It's much bigger than, than what the Soviet Union was in, the high, in its heyday. But I think it would be a mistake to characterize it as a threat. And Pompeo also cited Chinese apps like TikTok and WeChat, warning again of national security risks and data theft. <laughs> Professor Wan, he has never shown any evidence to back these kind of claims. Well, we've lost Professor Wang here, so let me put that question to Professor Gong. What do you make of this kind of charge? How do you respond to this? Uh, this is totally baseless. I think I've talked about this, this issue a couple of times. Uh, you know, even the U U.S. media itself admits that uh, there is no solid evidence behind this acquisition. Uh, TikTok doesn't do any more things uh, in terms of collecting user data than other regular applications, for example, from uh, Facebook and Google. So this is a uh, acquisition that is totally uh, groundless. And I think the reason that uh, Secretary Pompeo is so much engaged in this kind of activities is is more than just um, you know, uh, 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 you know I think the reason behind this is that he has his own personal I would call it personal China policy going on right now uh, and I think it's probably motivated by motivated by his own um, ambition uh, to be a, a, a real uh, candidate maybe in 2024 uh, presidential election um, what he has been doing, in my opinion, to equate China to uh, the Soviet Union is is totally uh, is totally wrong in my in my view. For example, I'll just give you one example. Um, China is not like not even like today's Russia that is you know being engaged in proxy wars uh, uh, in in several parts of the world. We don't do that. We don't go out and undermine American interests. Uh, the reports in Afghanistan, for example, that Russia is putting bounties on the table for killing American soldiers. We don't do any of these things. Uh, I don't think there's one single American soldier that has been victimized by things related to China for the last 20 years or so, and we don't have any design for that at all. So I think the the idea that you know to equate China to the former Soviet Union, you know, is is, is totally totally a gross exaggeration and. Uh, and, and, and I, I would even venture to say it's, a, it's an evil, evil political agenda here, um, let alone you know, the gross difference between today's China and today's Russia even. Now, Professor Wan is with us on the phone. So next question is for you, Professor Wan. China has been a repeated target for the secretary. He has attacked China over Xinjiang, Hong Kong, the South China Sea, and Huawei. He spread the conspiracy theory that COVID-19 originated in a Wuhan lab. In a recent speech at Nixon, Richard Nixon Presidential Library, he laid out the basis for an ideological struggle with Beijing. Let me get your take on this. Do any of this uh, criticisms has merit? And the way he spoke about the Chinese Communist Party made it sound as if the term was an ex expletive. I mean, is this personal for him? 
Well, uh, Rose Persona, and uh, he tried to reflect uh, some Americans' uh, so-called the China concerns and the China threat. I think there are uh, three major reasons behind him. Firstly, he's not a professional a diplomat. He's never served a diplomat before. He's a CIA director. The CIA's job is to make enemies. Uh, the uh, Secretary of the State is to make friends. So he now uh, helped to uh, Trump's administration make so many enemies around the world, not just with China. Secondly, uh, he has ambition to uh, run for the future president. So he wants to bash China and then get the uh, political legacy maybe in the future. Thirdly, uh, he's not a close ally of the President Trump. So he wants to show his loyalty to help uh, President Trump re-elected. The only back China can make, make uh, some sense, maybe, in his understanding. So his, his understanding about China, about the Communist Party, is, uh, is very, very limited. You know, China and the Soviet Union dispute the United early of the uh, 1960s. So that reason, the collapse of the Soviet Union, the Communist Party is here, uh, uh, very strongly supported by the uh, Chinese people. So he wants to divide the Chinese people and the Communist Party, want to use the Cold War of the ideology gap. And this is uh, not, uh, you know, all the world the way we write about the tech side and even the so-called the decouple. Professor Mahoney, now what kind of role does Mike Pompeo play in shaping President Donald Trump's hawkish policy toward China? I mean, how responsible is he for escalating China-U.S. tensions? You know, that's a good question. I, I, I don't think that uh, uh, Pompeo is, a, is an idiot. I think, he's, I think the other guests on the show are absolutely correct. He is trying to position himself for 2024. And to be honest with you, his biggest enemy uh, is Mike Pence. That's who he's probably going to have to <laughs> run against. Uh, and they want to have another, another term in office. And, um, and uh, you know, so right now, really the only play that the Trump administration has is to demonize black people, to demonize Chinese people, uh, to demonize the Communist Party of China. Um, and so in this sense, you know, that's, that's his objective. Uh, his biggest accomplish today, uh, accomplishment to date has been not to get fired. Uh, it's been to try to uh, stay ahead of Trump uh, on China, to compete with Pence on China. And uh, so I don't, think, I don't think this is an ideological thing. I think this is purely a self-serving thing uh, for this election cycle. But, but to be honest with you, there's a deeper issue, and this goes back to um, something that came out in the Bob Davis uh, way, uh, 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 Ling Ling Way book, that back in 2018, there was this idea uh, that, that uh, among, among leading policymakers and business, uh, business leaders in America, um, a, a majority of them felt that we were going to have some sort of conflict with China in the future. And so, you know, he's positioning himself for, for running in the future. Uh, for running against China in the future. He's trying to build his brand now. So uh, to this extent, I think he's, he's certainly feeding Trump uh, to stay in his own position, but also to build his brand for the future. Uh, so I'm not very optimistic about, about uh, where things are at this point or where they may be going. All right, that's all the time we're going to have for this edition of The Point. So thank you very much to my guests, Professor Wang Yiwei joining us on the phone, Professor Joseph Mahoney joining us from the States, and Professor Zhang Gong joining us here in Beijing. And this is the edition of The Point. As always, follow us on Facebook and Twitter using the handle Liu Xin in Beijing. Download the CDTN app to watch our show or go to YouTube and look for CDTN The Point. Thank you so much for your company. We'll see you next time.